Hello and good afternoon, Xbox Nation. Welcome to this week's first round of the Xbox Factor Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Mr. Boomstick XL. And my God, after last night's absolutely astounding new episode of Primetime Gaming, where we didn't just have Tim Dog from RDX, we didn't just have Crispy Bomb from Breakfast with Boom and the next podcast, we had some of the best conversation I think we had in years. We had 700 people live in the chat, folks, and my God, did we not drop the knowledge bomb on what the hell is going on at PlayStation. I brought the evidence like a like a good investigator could and should, and we had one incredible two-plus-hour podcast. If you missed that live, my God, you need to get over to Double Barrel Gaming and check that out as soon as this show is done because, obviously, we want you to enjoy your Xbox goodness, and we have one hell of a show for you today. Lots of big topics, some of which, of course, are going to be you know, very opinionated. Some of them are going to be suggestions. We don't have any absolute facts that Nintendo has teamed up with a team Xbox to potentially create something new and impressive. Uh, we don't know, you know, again, but we're going to be breaking that down momentarily. But let's get into the introductions. First up, you know him as the bravest man this side of Texas. He's ready to throw down with the zombie army that just dropped into Xbox Game Pass. Please welcome Zemi Game. Well, thank you so much, Ben. I'm uh, super excited to be here as always. Can't wait to jump in and talk about all these Xbox topics you have set up for us. And man, last night, 700 views. Absolutely incredible number, man. Like your channel just continues to grow, continues to evolve. And uh, right now is the greatest time for, you know, for that to be happening because I mean, gaming has never been bigger than what it is right now. So super uh, happy to see your success, man. And can't wait to jump into this show and talk about all the topics, man. Well, thanks so much for being here, brother, and definitely uh, appreciate the compliments. Yeah, 700 people in the live chat was insane. And again, you know, this channel is still small. We have we're we're close. We're we're close to hitting 8,000. And uh, I have a big announcement. Once we get once we get to 8,000, uh, the next uh, 2,000, the 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 march to 10k. Uh, Mrs. Boomstick and I are going to do something incredible for this community. I'm going to make that announcement as soon as we hit. Um, 8,000 subs, which we are, I think, 30-something away. So if you are new and you want that announcement and you want to get some big information about what we're doing once we hit 10K, uh, sub the channel. Uh, check it out. I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I don't think you're ever going to feel like, oh, this might this is a waste of my sub. Lots of fantastic content on a daily basis and at, and at least four live shows. Uh, but let's continue with Rookie Sensation. Uh, you know him as Pong Soul. He got a new avatar, which, by the way, I want you to tell the story behind this. I think it is one of the coolest stories uh, that I've ever heard. And uh, welcome to the program, brother. How you been? And first of all, congratulations on the outstanding success of Living Split Screen. Oh, thank you so much, Boom. Great to be here. Uh, another Tuesday afternoon, morning, depending on where you are. And man... Uh, I am fired up. We got some great topics. Yeah, um, about my avatar and uh, Living Split Screen. So Living Split Screen is doing great. Uh, shout out to the community for the love and support that they've shown myself and Steel Rain. And obviously, boom, you've been a big part of it, pumping it up uh, whenever you can and greatly appreciate you as well. Um, but uh, yeah, the avatar uh, got to work on this with my dad. Uh, you know, he's he's getting up there in age. He's 72 years old, but he's been a commercial design artist. Uh, for nearly 50 years now wow. and finally finally got to work on a project and uh, he still keeps himself busy still does work part-time um, and obviously I started uh, getting into this community and and doing things and I talked to him about it and you know he was so excited to to work with me as well uh, and get something do something together with you know dad and son it's kind of it's kind of cool so yeah oh uh, it's definitely <laughs> cool dude yeah yeah so so you know I was excited to finally unveil it we've been working on it for a couple of weeks now and going through design process and just kind of figuring out what what I wanted and and uh, so yeah it, it, it's great uh, and, and I'm happy to be able to unveil it I unveiled it last night but you're the first show I've been on with the new avatar. So hope everybody likes it. And I'm excited about the stuff I got going forward here. Yeah, well, you, you definitely got some big stuff coming. And I'm glad that, uh, you know, like I said, at least I can do is 
uh, assist you in getting the word out. And uh, that's that's the whole point of the show. Right. I mean, obviously, you know, my my, my whole uh, ground building uh, double barrel gaming was at the core uh, communities, community involved and, and uh, seeing other podcasters and content creators uh, get success. Uh, if I'm if I'm able to help that in any way, then I've done my job as a podcaster and a community member and I love what you guys are doing. Of course, we're talking about Zemi and Pong Soul. But folks, let's let's get into why you are here. Uh, and of course, we're going to start breaking down some of these incredible topics that we got in front of us. So I want to go to topic number one. Let me see over here. What do we got here? Um, you know, I, I, I kind of want to talk about momentum. Uh, if you if you if you were tuned into last night's primetime gaming, uh, we talked about how Sony has lost its momentum that it's seen for many, many years during the last gen. Uh, obviously, 2018 was a big year for first party. 2019 was a bigger year. And I would even dare say that 2020 was was potentially the biggest year for Sony regarding first-party bangers. But we are now in uh, April of 2021. And to say that uh, it seems that there's a seismic shift happening within the industry would be an understatement. And I would, again, dare say that Sony has lost a significant amount of goodwill, a tr tremendous amount of, uh, of luster. Um, I think that, uh, like we discussed last night, I think that the industry has turned on Sony and uh, has once, uh, once again, Microsoft has become the darling of the industry through this unbelievable momentum. And it seems as if most of, the, even some of the biggest critics and I say critics, and I'm being polite because I don't want to go to war with the gaming industry, but say the same people that will remain nameless, that I don't have to name, that if you're tuned in like I am, you know who I'm talking about, loathed Xbox last gen. At every given opportunity, poked fun at them and, and used their platform to, you know, to downgrade what Xbox was doing, has now turned their positive eyes onto the emerald green. And I want to talk about this momentum and how this is going to potentially be a launching point. Listen, you know, when we, when we, when you look back in history in gaming, if you are someone like myself that's old, and I'm old, folks, I'm going to be 51 in September, I have seen a lot of things happen in gaming that you can you can turn around and point to and say, I was there, I saw this, this change happen. The most radical, I think the most, uh, the one that re everyone remembers is this is how you share games, right? The, the, the uh, Andrew Boys, um, um, handing the game over to Yoshida, right? That's synonymous with the PlayStation Nation. That's synonymous with the PlayStation 4. And to be quite frank, won the generation at that moment. Um, now, we have not seen something as drastic happen to um, Xbox. But I will say that if you want to if you want to see where's the turning point you know, everyone could say, well, it's Xbox Game Pass, that, you know, summer of 2017. That was the turning point. I beg to differ because there were many people in this community that called it and never was. Many articles were written about how Xbox Game Pass cannot be sustained. That is that is going to be another thing that Microsoft fails at. Well, look where we are now. But I want to say that I think the turning point, the the this is how you share games moment for Xbox is last week's announcement by Phil, Dominus, Maximus, Aurelius. We got to get a fourth name. So, King, if you're listening, let's get that fourth name going. I like to say real deal. Spencer went on to Twitter and politely, and of course, in the most professional manner possible, let the entire world know that MLB The Show was coming on to Xbox Game Pass. Now, we've talked about this to, to the point of nauseam, but I have to bring it up again, folks, because it is the turning point of the conversation. Understand the ramifications behind this move. Xbox is 
has has a Sony developed first party game going into Xbox Game Pass. And if that already isn't a kick to the balls, here is the punch to the throat. PlayStation players for who own PlayStation 5 must pay 75 60 76 11 with tax here in New York. I think uh I think um Mag middle-aged gamer guy said that listen to this folks. In Canada the regular edition of MLB the show for Sony's PlayStation 5 is $106. The Jackie Robinson edition is $160 U.S. in Canada. You know what it costs anyone who is already subscribed to Game Pass? Nothing. You know who it, what it will cost if you saw this deal and said, I have to get Xbox Game Pass? Probably a dollar or if you or, or your $15 if they didn't have a deal going on. But this is where the punch in the throat comes from, folks. And this is where... This is going to be the time. This is this is going to be the time you remember that the tide has changed. PlayStation players have to pay for the next gen version with an additional uh, eleven and twelve dollars plus tax. Xbox gamers get the next gen edition through smart delivery for the price of free. Now I, I, I'm going to go to Zemi first on this. Zemi, this this is momentum that is probably as heavy as a mountain coming down on somebody. And I'm not saying Sony is dead and they can't recover, mm -hmm. but there's a reason why Jim Ryan and Herman Holtz have not said anything since this announcement. Yeah. Does Microsoft and more specifically the Xbox platform have momentum in a way that they might not have had in years? Yeah, no, for sure. They they definitely have momentum like they haven't had since before the awful PR disaster of 2013 that we all like to try to forget never happened. But um, no, they, they absolutely do have the momentum going in, you know, to the second year with these consoles being out. And uh, they they they're like the golden child in the gaming industry. Right. Extremely consumer friendly. Um, giving ridiculous amounts of value to the consumer that just have never been seen in in the gaming industry for you know us you know gamers to to take advantage of right um so no for sure they they have the momentum but i think it's also to remember that momentum changes and it shifts and so not yes. only does xbox have the momentum now they have to keep the momentum right we're going to get they, we're actually going to get into how they do that at the second half of the show yes uh, okay yeah so I'll, I'll i'll hold on to that um <clears throat> but no yeah they 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 for sure have the momentum they they 100% deserve it and uh you know from sony's side honestly probably the best thing that they can do is just stay quiet and figure out how to fix this right um, <clears throat> that's what I would probably be doing if I was in Jim Ryan's shoes is be, you know, be quiet until you have some big nugget of information, um, that, that, that you can give to your consumers to, 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 you know, help weaken the Xbox argument of, of why you should buy an Xbox this generation and not buy maybe a PlayStation. Um, because let's just be honest, right. That, you know, the whole NBA thing, that was a, a, a huge, huge, huge loss you know, on, on PlayStation's PR, right? You know, ultimately, you know, that decision probably doesn't hurt them financially that much because they're still making the game and they're still going to be pulling in the money for all the people that play it on Game Pass, right? Um, but but public relations wise, it really, really hurts. And they need to, you know, definitely figure out how to avoid this happening again in the future. I, I think I mentioned that on last week's show. And so it's it's no surprise that they're not being super vocal about it. I, I think that they're just trying to figure out how do they fix this? How do they grab some momentum uh, back from Xbox? Because they are absolutely killing it so far right now. And, and you know what? I mean, there's, there's no arguing that. And you know something? Here's the thing. You know, you, you say that financially, is it going to hurt them? Well, this this is this is where we have a conversation. And again, I, I don't want to keep beating the horse, so to speak, uh, because I'm an animal lover. So I definitely want don't want to beat a horse. But, you know, in the terminology realm of the conversation, Pong, here's the thing. We talked about it last night and I'm going to bring it up now because MLB, the show is at the tip of my tongue. 
Okay. Let's just say for shits and giggles here, right? That Sony sells 1.7 to 1.9 million copies of the show uh, between both the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, which is normally what it sells, right? And you're like, okay, well, you know, that's 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 good money for them. They sold almost 2 million copies. You know what? Let's, let's even go crazy and say they sell 2 million copies. Here is where we get into the conversation of how um, Sony finds themselves in a real pickle. One of the things that they do in MLB The Show is microtransactions, right? That is something that you find in Madden. That is something you find in Ultimate Team for both Madden and, and, and FIFA and, and obviously 2K. You, you, you know, it's, it, it's, one, it's one microtransaction after another. Here's my question, and we're gonna. I want. I'm gonna give you the Sony question. I'm gonna follow it up with an Xbox. How do you know the momentum question? Let's just say, for instance, that five million people out of the twenty plus million Xbox subscribers um, download MLB the Show and are playing it. We do know for a fact that Xbox Game Pass subscribers buy more games they're getting it at a 20 percent discount if they buy it what if what does it say to sony and how they can completely uh, you know lose momentum if more players download the game on xbox and are playing on xbox and buy the game on xbox as opposed to the first party game being sold on playstation that is a momentum killer what that does for then Microsoft is momentum in a way that goes outside of just me, you, and Zemi talking about it and, and the 300 people we have here. This goes into third-party developers saying, holy shit, look at what they're doing at Xbox Game Pass. We need to get our game in there immediately because it, they're selling more so Sony first party uh, a title on their platform than Sony sold on their own. And that once again, that that is momentum that Microsoft didn't have to pay for. And they're literally it's it's a seismic shift. One going down, meaning Sony, one going high, meaning Xbox. What are your thoughts on that, Pong? Well, it's going to be if that happens, if that comes to pass, which, you know, chances are pretty good. Uh, that the numbers that Sony um, and MLB see uh, from, you know, this transition to a multi, uh, you know, console uh, type approach with MLB the show uh, and opening it up to other platforms, including Game Pass. Um, I think those numbers are going to be a confirmation of what everybody has been talking about recently. And, and it's going to shift or shape the conversation you know, if we're talking about Sony specifically in, in their boardroom going forward, right? It, it, those conversations have probably already started happening. Obviously they have to be thinking about what they're going to look like in the future. So if they see the numbers come out of game pass and it confirms everything, you know, from what we've seen, you know, whether it be outriders, uh, whether it be EA play coming into game pass and obviously EA being extremely happy with what they're seeing uh, to the point where they, you know, uh, put Madden in there early uh, compared to what they used to do when they used to drop it just into their own uh, service being EA Play. Um, I think that that conversation in the Sony boardroom has to turn to, okay, look, our model is outdated. This is the future model going forward. And Microsoft Xbox now has the controlling stake in this new model because they have been out front and they got out of the gates first. So then Sony has to turn to what are we going to do? How are we going to pivot? What is our response going to be? And I'm sure there's something already in the works. We've, we've heard people like David Jaffe talk about it, that he's got sources that say that they've got something in the works, but how are they going to compete on this type of level? So MLB, the show for Sony specifically is the test product, whether they had knowledge of it, which they I assume they did at some point, obviously, you know, 
they'd have to know that it was going yeah, to be yeah, game I would imagine. What, so, I mean, they what, had to. Yeah, yeah. Whether, whether they had control over it or not, that's a different story. But they had to know that this was going to happen. So, so what do you do? I mean, it, you take this situation. It was a big hit to them. It's a big hit to their fan base. Um, it's, it's a big hit overall. But what do you, what do, you do? You got to try to pull something positive, positive out of it. So you're going to start looking at the numbers because you're going to have access to the numbers about how your game is doing on another platform and, and specifically uh, a platform that is seemingly disrupting the entire industry going forward into the future. So I think you got to take those numbers. You have to analyze it and go, look, okay, so here's the positive. The more people that see, you know, this type of game that has microtransactions in it, the better it is. We're also starting to see that game pass, like you said, boom has a higher sale rate you know, for games that drop into Game Pass than just a game that is traditionally sold, you know, whether it's through a digital store or whether it's through, you know, the brick and mortar store. Right. So I think that those numbers, Sony has to take those and use those to say, okay, it's time for us to come up with some type of answer, some type of response, our own version. Again, whether it's a hybrid version, um, you know, Zemi and you and I were talking, you know, in the green room, and, and we talked about this before on another show too, is that maybe there's a hybrid version and they use their the, the potential that they have um, with their movies, uh, you know, TVs, music, and kind of all combine it together and offer, offer a service that that is is a broader than just Game Pass. Um, you know, obviously, they're not going to have the content. They can't make the content that Microsoft and Xbox are going to be able to do with all their teams. So you got to come up with something, though. Um, so I think that's where Sony goes with this, uh, being that there's nothing they could do about it. It's there. It's already happened. It's, it's, it's happening. You know, the 20th is coming. So right. you, you can only take what you can out of it and say, okay, we're still getting paid. Uh, we're still going to get a portion of this money. Things are looking good. Now, how can we turn this information into uh, making our own type of service better? So I think that's, that's where this goes specifically for Sony. Uh, momentum wise. Yeah. Xbox has all the momentum and I know we're going to get into specifics later. Um, but right now they're, they've successfully uh, started dancing to their own tune. Okay. They've successfully done what Sony did and removed themselves from the old ways and created their own space where it's up to them going forward, how far it takes them. And they're basically really the only ones that can trip themselves up no matter what Sony does. Yes. Uh, you know, Sony, Sony can announce something and there could be momentum, but Microsoft it has so much and they're doing their own thing so well right now. They don't have to worry about that anymore. That, that that's no longer a concern. Yeah, I mean, I mean, look again. We 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 don't know how far the, how how far this is going to affect Sony in one way or another. Um, but it, it it it's certainly an interesting conversation to see how this whole thing transpired and how. I mean, again, you know, everyone everyone that, that talks about the situation says, well, you know. Uh, the media doesn't like Sony now because, well, you know, when they when they drop the trailer for Horizon Forbidden West, it's all going to be forgotten because they have bangers. And I'm not saying that they don't. Returnal looks fantastic. Does it look seventy dollars fantastic? No, it does not. And I'm not buying it for seventy dollars. Um, I'll get it on sale. I'll wait a month. I'll wait two months, and I'll get it uh, for forty bucks. And then I'll feel like okay. Ratchet and Clank's a different story because I'm a big platform guy. I love Ratchet and Clank, so that's a, that's a day one purchase for me. But we don't know what else they have coming out. God of War is not coming out this year. I don't even think we're going to get um, Aloy this year. I think the Chief falls and uh, and Horizon fall into early 2022. But again, I have no proof on that. That's just my, my just my opinion. And I want uh, um, Horizon Forbidden West because, well, it's one of my favorite franchise, new franchises for Sony. I talk about uh, Aloy all the time. But getting to getting to Xbox, getting to the conversation that we are having now about the momentum, I I, I kind of want to just do a subplot here. Um, and, and get the, uh, I mean, again, we, we, we have almost 400 people here. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. We're not even 24 minutes into the show, and we have almost 400 people here, which that says that we're, whatever we're doing, we're doing it right. And I want to thank you for supporting Double Barrel Gaming. So if you're new, I, I want to honestly say, please consider subscribing. Uh, this is the kind of content you get weekly. And if you are here, hit the like button, folks. Let's let's try and let's try and do a one for one. Let's pull a Nintendo. You know, every console sold, you, you someone buys a, a Mario. 
Well, let's try and get, if you're here and you're enjoying the content, hit the damn like button. Uh, that's that's it. But I, I want to do a, sub, a subplot here and ask the question to the chat, ask the question to the esteemed panel. We see that deals for Microsoft, I, and again, I've heard this personally. I've talked to two developers, not one, but two, two separate developers that told me there is currently a waiting list to get into Xbox Game Pass, which tells me that they're lining up at the door, so to speak. The question that I have for the ch uh, for, for the panel is, has Xbox Game Pass become the new exclusive? Because I think that Microsoft is doing literally so well that they don't care about exclusivity anymore. And I don't think it actually matters because Outriders is not exclusive. But is anyone talking about the PlayStation version? Absolutely not. No one gives a flying cow about what's going on at the PlayStation side of Outriders. But everyone, that's anyone, is talking about Outriders in Xbox Game Pass. So if you are a third-party developer and you're seeing the numbers that Outriders is getting, the coverage that Outriders is getting, the free publicity that Outriders is getting from shows just like this. Do you take the bag of money from Sony for the, uh, the, 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 the marketing, or do you look over at Xbox Game Pass and say, you know what, that's kind of a better deal, you know what I'm saying? Especially if you have planned DLC and microtransactions in your game. Pong, why don't you take this? Has... Yeah. Xbox Game Pass become the new exclusive. Yeah, in a lot of ways it has. Uh, they have successfully uh, changed the entire conversation about what it is to market a game, uh, what it means uh, to a publisher and a developer um, when it comes to signing an exclusivity deal. They have successfully changed the entire narrative in, in a matter of a, a couple of years just because of the success of Game Pass and where it's going. I think now, and we're seeing it slowly turn, but I think it's speeding up, and it, that's because of what Xbox has done to promote Game Pass and to increase uh, the uh, knowledge that is out there in the mainstream as far as what Game Pass actually is. Um, but they have successfully come to the point where it's going to be, and it is now, right now for some people, a bigger risk not to put your game in Game Pass than it is to put your game in Game Pass. And that is a huge seismic shift in the old mentality uh, of what it means uh, when you were to choose, let's say, a bag of money to hold your game exclusive to one console or one platform or another now, when they take a start taking a look, let let's say, and I think I think your panel did a fantastic job last night of of, of talking oh, dude, about the subject. Everyone had just knocked it out of the park. Oh, dude. man, it was incredible, boom! And, and so I think a lot of what you're going to hear right now is kind of a repeat, but I think it's it's common sense when you look at this from the outside and you see. Can you imagine? Let's let's say that you are a publisher and and Sony comes to you and says, "Hey." We want to make this game a year exclusive or two year exclusive like they've supposedly done with Forspoken, right? And they're right. going to say, we're going to give you X amount of dollars, okay? And, and you got to hold, you can't put it anywhere else but here. And then all of a sudden, Phil's knocking at your door and Phil walks in and says, hold on, hold on, hold on. How about this? You simply, we're going to give you a bag of money too, but you're going to simply drop your game into Game Pass day and date you're going to have 20, 25 million, whatever that number is right now, eyes on your game day one with potential downloads, with potential DLC, with potential microtransactions, whatever the case your game holds. We're going to, we're all we're asking you to do is drop it into Game Pass day and date. You can still go put your game over on Steam. You can still put your game on Sony. We don't care. Go ahead, do that. Put it on Nintendo, right? All we want is Game Pass day and date, and here's all the benefits on top of what you're doing. And you're that you're that publisher, and you've seen what happened to Outriders, right? You've seen the talk about MLB. All Dude, the that, talk. Let's talk about Octopath yeah. Traveler for a second. Octopath Traveler, a sixty dollar game everywhere that else. People forgot about it. Is 
blowing up. It's everyone is taking pictures and screenshots and videos and playing the S out of that game. And it's a, it's a JRPG that's hand drawn and in game pass day and date still $60 on, on, on the switch. Exactly. That that's, and and that's the that's the shift now because you can't be so blind as to not know and see what's happening in not only social media not only in our community but the word is spreading outwards it's that ripple effect that happens when you come up with some, an idea like game pass that increases the value so much not only for your own platform but for anybody who decides to put their games in their games, that game Octopath Traveler was up for Game of the Year awards, right? Yes, it it's, sure was. Right. It sat in Nintendo exclusivity for, I think, what, two years, almost three years now? It's been over there. They've sold as much as they possibly could sell of that game. What you do then is all of a sudden you drop into Game Pass and breathe new life into it. So not only does Game Pass work for brand new games like Outriders, like MLB The Show, but it works for older games. And that's what I'm talking about, is you're going to see that shift where developers, you know, publishers, they look at a game, and that time period from the time that they release it to the time that they want to drop it into Game Pass is shortening. Shortening more and more because they understand that your initial shit sales for a game are going to be within that first, let's say 30 to 90 days. And then after that point, what's it doing? It's sitting around, you know, trickles, tr- you know, the sales start to trickle down. You throw it in a game pass and get it in front of, of 20, 25 million people. Those sales skyrocket again. And the proof is in the pudding for all those people that have been saying that game that, you know, the game pass, you know, it isn't for people who want to buy their games. That's a lie. That's a, oh, flat out that's, lie. A, that's a, that's a lie, dude. Cause it's 20% yes. off of the game itself and 10% off DLC. Correct. And you know, what's happened? Yes. There are certain games that I will just play in game pass until, you know, until it goes away, but there are certain games. It's like getting a free full game demo and when people see something that they love, they still want to own it. And so they go and buy it. They yes. still want that feeling, right? But the, but it's a trial period. It's that initial trial period where we get a game for free that causes people to go and expand out and try new things. I, I can guarantee you there's people who never would have picked up Aquapath Traveler in their life. But they got to try it on Game Pass and they loved it. And they Dude, I'm, I'm 17 it. hours into the game. <laughs> yep, exactly. I, I think I've got right around there with you, Boom. And I'm an old JRPG lover, so I knew I was going to love it anyways, right? That, that's that's just me. But the point of fact is, is that Game Pass is the new vehicle for devs and publishers to get their games in front of a huge base. And we're not, you know, again... We, we kind of touched on on games that are built around microtransactions or games as a service. It is the perfect marriage between those types of games and Game Pass because you need that install base to keep the game going. And as we saw with Outriders, a game that got a meh from a lot of people when the demo came out. It got revitalized the minute it dropped into Game Pass. Suddenly, people were talking about it. Suddenly, people were t- are playing it on Twitch. And suddenly, it's climbing the sales charts. Not just the engagement charts, but the sales charts. People are buying this game because they fell in love with the gameplay. They fell in love with the, you know, some people fell in love with the lore like I did. But it got revitalized. It went from being a what was probably going to be maybe an okay seller for Square Enix to one of their biggest games they've put out in years. Can I can I give you some stats that yep. blew my oh, mind listening to Game it, on Daily? Listen, by the way, Game on Daily, uh, obviously, that's run by Gaz. Uh, d- d- dude, let me, let me tell you, him and Aza are – are like they're they're the perfect blend of of hosts because you know Aza is very straightforward. Not you know he he has excitement, but it's not like Gaz. G- Gaz's level of excitement is to the point of it's ridiculous, and that's what I love about the pair of them. Their we their uh, podcast this week had King David and Ainsley on my god what an episode but i bring that up not only because i want to see them have tremendous success because i love those guys but ainsley dropped some massive knowledge 
that I did not I did not know. Did you guys know that the number one selling game on Xbox? Listen to this, folks. The number one selling game on Xbox is Outriders. And you can get it for free. Yep. Now, that is a stat that if I'm in the boardroom and I'm looking at the do we do we go for Sony because they have the, the mass number of people? Or do I go over to a service that's going to put my game in the best light possible? Right. Well, the answer is super easy there, Pong. Yep. It is. It's super easy. And that's that's the last piece I was going to touch on is the marketing that comes along with Game Pass. You cannot underestimate. Do you know how companies spend so much money on millions we of have dollars. Right. We've heard about the movie industry where it's basically for like a Star Wars movie. It's one for one, basically, almost right. Whatever dollar they put into the movie, making the movie, they're spending they on marketing for, for advertising. Yes. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. So that alone, that value, because like you talked about, boom, the, the, when you talk about MLB right now or you talk about Outriders right now or you talk about Octopath Traveler. The next words out of people's mouth is Game Pass. Yes, that, it's like straight up. It's like it, it, it. It's it's to the point where games are becoming synonymous with Game Pass. Microsoft has successfully done something that every company will pay tons of money, especially like Sony. We've seen it with third party exclusivity. They have done something successful by just having a game drop into Game Pass. You make these games synonymous with Xbox and Game Pass as the platform. It is crazy to see the shift that has happened but that was what that ripple effect causes when you have something that has the momentum that we were just talking about going forward where customers see the value developers see the value you know publishers see the value mm -hmm. everybody involved with this is getting something out of it and are feeling good about it and yeah. that is like the ultimate perfect storm to have when you're trying to do this to the industry, when you're trying to disrupt the industry and create the Netflix of gaming. And again, there's more to it than just saying the Netflix, the model is there. But again, Netflix doesn't sell you anything. Whereas gaming, you have DLC, you have microtransactions, a lot of games. That's the difference. And what you're seeing out of this is that sales actually increase, uh, you know, because of Game Pass, not go down. You don't lose. Out and of here's a perfect game. example of to what you're saying is Narita Boy, right? Yeah, this absolutely. is a game that I, I mean, Ainsley actually said this. He was offered a code by the developer for review. He didn't get back to the guy, right? Now, he didn't do it out of being rude. He's just a very busy man, right? He, you know, so f the four people that are attached to his, his, uh, his show all are playing it. They reviewed it. It's, it's one of their highest most viewed reviews right but what he said was interesting he may not have even gave it a second look if it wasn't for game pass right and what's crazy is that this is the type of game that you're going to go back and play if it decides to leave game pass in three months i almost guarantee one to one, if you're playing that game and enjoying it as much as he is, uh, and, and many people are, I downloaded, I didn't play it yet. You're going to buy that game because yep. you're going to get twenty percent off, and you're going to want to buy a game because it's a game that you would have passed on if it wasn't for Game Pass. Yep. I mean, listen, I, I can go around in circles about the new exclusive. <laughs> I I have to get to Zemi Games, but Zemi, my God, I have to get to these super <clears throat> chats. I mean, it's an go arm length of oh, of, it is. Of super it's, chats. it's it's getting long. It's getting and, long. And, and you know what, folks? Listen, this is the thing. Uh, wh when I see this kind of love that comes from me, it, it literally not only warms my heart as a as a producer. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's as humbling as you could possibly imagine. You don't even understand because I don't do this for money. I do this for the love of this community and for the love of gaming. And this is just a complete bonus. But I the Super Chats, my God, it's just incredible. The first one of the day comes to us from Kill Antis. He drops 
an outstanding two dollar super chat and says thank you boom and panel for all you do well thank you for the generosity my brother and thanks for being here chaos might good friend of the show has become a new channel member thank you chaos might definitely appreciate that davikin 89 a generous friend of the show he drops an outstanding two dollar super chat and says game pass could potentially kill timed exclusive deals and i think you're on to something with that especially if you're square enix i don't think if uh this happened next year that you that uh if this i'll put it this way the two deals that they signed square enix i'm talking about with sony in final fantasy 16 and um and the other game that's both two-year exclusives if they had the 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 metrics that they have currently there's no way they sign that deal with Sony. They say no deal because we can make more money on Xbox Game Pass. I, I almost guarantee you. Um, Gerald Mack, another generous friend. Oh, Gerald Mack is a new member of the channel. Gerald, thank you so much. Thank you for that, brother. Definitely appreciate that. Lonely Boy drops an outstanding and very generous $10 super chat. This is the latest rumor, and I like where he's going with this. Microsoft will acquire Metal Gear IP. I have heard that. Uh, license from Konami and the Kojima partnership will involve a new Metal Gear Solid as Phil continues to expand the Japanese studios and reach. You know, it's funny. We're going to be talking on Thursday. I'm, I'm writing an original topic on because uh, it was mentioned last night, and I thought it was so interesting that I wanted to elaborate. So I have to, you know, have to get my ducks in order. Um, I think that if you look at what Microsoft is doing, uh, and it was brought up last night, uh, we have currently Matt Booty, and Matt Booty is in charge of the 15 uh, first-party studios. Uh, you know, the, the, you know, not counting Bethesda, Pete Hines is is handling the bethesda side of things those eight studios um and i think that if if again this was mentioned last night and i like i like the thought process of this whether you like kojima or you don't whether you love his games or not his relevance in japan cannot be understated or overstated in the conversation he is a presence he still holds a significant amount of weight. And if you want to make a splash in Japan, if you want to make a dent in a region that they have notoriously failed many, many years, you turn around and you take a Kojima, you say, make whatever game you want. P.S. By the way, here is your biggest F you to konami right now you can turn around and tell them to go f themselves because you're going to make the metal gear because now we own the ip which he would do and by the way here's another big binks truck filled with money we would like you to lead our japan studios here in the region that he's most popular and most familiar with and look at the three-headed monster that you have going for xbox you have them doing something in japan with kojima you have a uh, pete hines handling the bethesda stuff and matt booty handling the other 15 studios this is a this is a match made in heaven. That that's all I can say. Uh, but uh, thank you for the super chat, brother. Lord Roughness, another generous friend of the show. He drops an outstanding five dollars super chat and says, "It's like we're afraid to give Xbox slash Game Pass the W." Uh, I don't I don't think so here, brother. I think we they, they got the W ten uh, times two already. Four <laughs> months of positive mind share uh, for Xbox is huge, and before the exclusives start churning out, and that's a, that's a great point. Could you imagine all of this goodwill, all of this positive press, is before we get Halo Infinite, Fable, Horizon Zero Dawn, Perfect Dark, Avowed? I, I could just keep going and going, folks. It it it's it, it's bananas to be honest with you. Um, Gerald Mack, who just became a channel member, drops a five dollar super chat and says, "I think I said this yesterday. All of the baseball fans are on Xbox Live after April twentieth. That changes. They become Game Pass members. Oh, and no doubt about that. And Johnny Morrison drops a very generous five dollar super chat and says, "Currently downloading the seventy two gig MLB the Show for the Series X on Game Pass. Let's go. Yeah, I did. I did that already, brother. I'm, um, I, I had to do it. I, I actually did that. For some reason, I couldn't do it." on the on the console i did it through the game pass app but crazy just absolutely crazy uh james 176 drops a very generous two dollars super chat and says game pass 
uh, makes a huge difference. Ask Narita Boy. You see that we were just talking about that. Gerald Max drops an additional $5 super chat and says, the Xbox Game Pass program helps everyone, the developer, the publisher, and we, the gamer, gotta love Game Pass. Hey, listen, if you're not subscribed, folks, I, I don't even know what to say to you. Um, Z Black Rider drops a very generous $5 super chat and says, um, hey, bo- uh, hey, boys and girls. Well, thanks so much for your generosity. Now, I think I missed a few. Hold on a sec here. Yeah, I actually did. Okay, we um, Andrew Sos drops a five dollar super sticker, and uh, thank you for that, brother. Definitely appreciate you being here. But thank you for the generosity. And Lonely Boy dropped an additional five dollar super chat and says this. And I, that's why I was laughing before. And normally, it's, it's 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 not a good host to laugh, but I couldn't help it. He says, "Here's another five dollars for a free month of Game Pass on me. Keep up the great work, Boom. Well, thanks so much. Definitely appreciate that, brother." Um, but Zemi, you've heard the uh the, the what, what pong so brought to the table i'm gonna be honest with you i feel bad for you because you gotta follow that up because holy yeah. shit <laughs> did he just knock it out of the park but the, the question from sorry the, mark- the, okay. the questioning from a marketing point of view which of course is your forte has xbox game pass become the true exclusive for microsoft's platform no Okay, so why is that in the fact the case? Well, I mean, I, I think you know, I, I, I think you know, saying that it's an exclusive is is easy for us to understand, and I think in some ways it shares a lot of similarities with exclusives, right? You know, um, because Xbox is offering something that PlayStation is unable, and and any and and all other gaming companies, let's just be honest here, is unable or unwilling to do, and and for that reason, it does appear to kind of somewhat be like an exclusive. But, but I don't really think that that's the most accurate way of putting it. I think it would actually in some ways be more accurate to say that it's an exclusive killer. It is a third party exclusive killer, you know, like what you were talking with Octopath. And I think you guys gave a lot of examples and, and, and uh, there was a super chat that came in as well. Uh, also talking about, you know, uh, Square Enix uh, potentially, you know, not um, uh, signing those deals with Sony if 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 they knew about Game Pass how it is right now you know today right and so I I think that you know more than it just being an exclusive which in some ways it kind of is I I think you know from the historical point of view of what an exclusive is like I think it makes more sense to say that it's actually an exclusive killer it's a third party exclusive killer because now. Um, and, and I feel like I'm kind of just you know going over the points that you know Pong said and you said, but but now there's less reason, there's less value into going to Sony and saying, hey, we want to sign this deal with you and get a big check to have this game only on your platform, right? Because the value in Game Pass is just so tremendous that that that's really not the greatest option anymore. It's it's a heck of a lot better option if you're a third party developer instead of going for that exclusive deal with Sony or Nintendo or whoever else will have you, it's a lot better of an idea to put it on everywhere and and make sure if you can to even get it into Game Pass because you're going to have a lot of engagement with uh, consumers that you previously wouldn't have had, you know, any other way. Um, But then also you're going to be promoting game sales and Word of mouth is 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 amazing marketing, right? Um, it, it's fantastic, and and we see that all the time. I mean, think about it. You're in an Xbox Live party. Somebody's playing something. They're having a lot of fun with it. What are they going to say? Hey, you should check out this game. You you know you have Game Pass, right? Well, if you don't, well, it, you know, ten dollars a month, right? What you see? What I'm saying? Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. so, from a marketing perspective, it is absolutely phenomenal. You know, from a value perspective, it's great for consumers. It's great for developers. Um, and and it, and it's great for Xbox, right? So it, it is a extremely powerful tool that Xbox has here. And and in some ways, it is like an exclusive because Sony doesn't uh have the ability, you know, to to currently uh, be able to boast you know, uh, what, what Xbox game pass is able to do. Right. So in that way, it is kind of like an exclusive, but I, I wouldn't say that game pass has completely replaced what an exclusive means to Xbox. Of course, they still have halo infinite. Of course. Um, I, I, I guess I was wrong and, and elder scrolls is going to be an exclusive to game pass. <laughs> right. Um, so I don't think it re- replaces the exclusive. I think it shares some similarities with it, but I think 
what what is more important here is that it is a third party exclusive killer it gives these companies less reason why they want to do that historic thing like uh not allow final fantasy on xbox on launch right it kind of removes that 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 the value of doing that for sony money because you have a lot more to gain by putting it on Game Pass and putting it on every other platform as well. A lot more money to make, a lot more mind share to gain, a lot more advertising, and a lot more people to play your game and enjoy it. Yeah, no, I I, I, I agree. I, I think what you said is, is perfect. I mean, the only thing I disagree with is uh, with the actual exclusivity aspect of it, simply because, I mean, again, you, you did say that a PlayStation does not have something that is... Uh, comparable yeah they have playstation now they have playstation plus and things of that nature but it's it's just not the same and yeah. especially especially when you look at what just happened with playstation now right now this is folks we, again we're going down some deep holes here but but again part of the conversation so it must be it must be spoken about um right as as we speak right now if you are a paying OK, and I want I want to kind of put that in the highlighter paying customer of PlayStation. Now, whether you bought it for the year, whether you bought it for the month, however, it doesn't matter. You're a paying customer as a paying customer. You should have the ability to download a game that takes advantage. By the way, did you just see my Titan just land on another Titan? That was dope. I, by the way, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I I'm going to throw watching. that out there. Um, but as a paying customer, you should have the ability almost automatically, and maybe because we're spoiled because Xbox does this, but if you have a PlayStation 4, you're going to obviously play the PlayStation 4 version of said game. If you are a PlayStation 5 owner, well, you have you know, you spent the big bucks on a new console. Sony is definitely going to give you the ability to play the newer version of the game, right? Wrong. Right now, currently, PlayStation now paying customers cannot play the next gen versions of Borderlands 3 and or Avengers. Because it's blocked. That's confirmed, folks. That's not a suggestion from Boomstick. That is confirmed knowledge. And this, again, this is the cherry on top of the of the the crap Sunday that Sony has been uh, been 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 uh, given in the last couple of weeks. And again, it's it's worse because no one from Sony is talking about it. No one from Sony is saying, "Yeah, we can fix this with a download," or "We can we hear you and we're going to get to working on it." I do want to move on to the next topic, but before I do, I have to catch up with some of these outstanding super chats that have come in. Gamer by choice drops a very generous $5 super chat. And first of all, shout out to a Z Black Rider. I, 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 I read his super chat, but then I thought about I didn't really read his super chat because I didn't know how to read it. He says, yeah, super chat. Thank you for that, Z Black Rider. Love that you're here. Hey, boys and girls, thank you for the generosity. But Z Black Rider, thank you for the support. As always, you've been here since the beginning. Um, and I definitely appreciate that. Gamer by Choice drops a five dollars super chat and says, "Great show, everyone! I am loving the discussion. Boom and panel, you are one of my favorite shows, dude. That's so awesome. It's like, I mean, like the five dollars super chat is great, but it's those kind of comments, man, that really make it worth the, the 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 amount of effort that goes into these shows. And so, thank you for that. We have Finesseful J drops a very generous five dollars super chat and says, "Don't forget Ninja Gaiden slash Dead or Alive uh, creator Tonabu Itagaki said." recently that he wants to work with xbox again plus he's looking for a new home yeah you know what dude sign that dude and again this is the magic of someone like um metal gear creator um why, why, why am i having a brain fart on his on, on um on uh, live on the air <laughs> kojima uh, kojima <laughs> this this is this is this is the magic of having Kojima potentially sign with Xbox because here's the thing. If you know, here's a little inside baseball. Him and Sony left not on the greatest terms, folks. They denied him his his, his you know follow up to um, the fir his first PlayStation exclusive. They denied him on that, right? 
And he then went over to Stadia because he had something in mind that was going to be, you know, you know, ta- you know, th- they're going to give him a bag of money. Stadia took a dump. And now he's now he's like, OK, well, I'm not going back to Sony because they screwed me. I'm going to go to Xbox. If you get him running Japan and you get someone like Tenobu wanting to join Xbox and you get his small studio in Japan to make, let's say, I don't know, a Ninja Gaiden successor. You say here, let's let's here's a bag of money. We need that action over the shoulder title, the adult theme. We need you know limbs flying all over the place. That's what we're missing from Xbox. Can you deliver? I can, and he tells Phil Spencer, "You're damn right, I can deliver. I still got it." And he delivers a Ninja Gaiden type experience. Now, whether that's two years, three years, four years, they don't have to rush because they have 35 teams and 23 studios, and this is how you build Japan. This is how, and again, part of the conversation, Sony has left Japan, folks. They just closed Japan Studios, one of the most beloved first-party studios in their whole repertoire. They just closed it down so they can focus on making the big AAA games. So is there is, is Bloodborne 2 coming? Probably not. And that pisses off a lot of Sony players. And with Microsoft making these moves in Japan now, my God, they have a shot. They have a real shot to take Japan. But Black Eye Dog drops a very generous $5 super sticker. Thank you for being here, brother, and thank you for the generosity. Uh, Michael Smith drops a very generous $5 super chat and says, Xbox wants GPU uh, Game Pass Ultimate to be the number one entertainment app. Netflix is who they are, uh, who they're after, not Sony. When xCloud is on every platform, it's over. Great show, guys, indeed. And I think you're absolutely right on that. And I think that they hit... Uh, again, this is this is a shot in the dark, and I don't mind being wrong, and I don't mind going to speculation town. I wouldn't be surprised by E3, which is 60 days away officially, that they hit 30 million and they announce it there. I, I really think they're going to they, – they, It's just, there's just too much going on for Game Pass for them not to get these crazy subscribers. Um, we also have Smitty Smith. Hey, bringing us back to church. That's our brother. Smitty Smith drops a very generous five dollars super chat and says, Game Pass, be so great – be that they that can't deny you the book of acts. I mean, come on, that's a great quote, dude, for sure. Urban Ninja drops a very generous final super chat. Final Fantasy VII remake is only uh, is only PlayStation version as well. Yeah, yeah. If you got the the, the free version of 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 Final Fantasy VII, um, you cannot get the upgrade that's coming in June. And I think that we talked about that last night, that we think June is when they announce Final Fantasy VII is coming to Game Pass, and you're going to get the upgrade for free through uh, Smart Delivery. And um, Isma Easy drops a very generous final super chat and says, one PlayStation first-party game cost $104 here in Canada. Yikes. Just with Outriders... And Major League Base uh, MLB game on Game Pass saved me $180. Three PS games are $312. Game Pass is $240 a year. I mean, folks, th- there it is. There are the officials' numbers from our friends in Canada that tells you why you should be why you why would you buy anything for Sony when you can go over to Game Pass and get those games for the same for, for, for you know four hundred games in Xbox Game Pass. But let's move on to the next topic, and I want to talk about. Um, let me see. Let me get up. Let me pull my number. I want to talk about Forza for a second because we have a new story that dropped. Uh, from Game Rant, you know, when you when you talk about Forza, the name is synonymous, at least in my personal opinion, with greatness. Um, and when you talk about both racers, you know, you have a racing sim, of course, which is done by Turn Ten Studios, and you have the incredible arcade-like racer from Playground Games, uh, making the award-winning racers from Team Xbox the most popular in the land. And obviously titles like Gran Turismo, unfortunately have been left in the dust, pun included. Uh, But in a story pulled from Game Rant, Forza Motorsport 8 developers have confirmed that they are now starting feedback play tests for the next motorsport with applications now open and some players will be able to get early versions of the game. Now, if you are interested, what I did is in the show notes of my 
my YouTube um, channel, which of course is this particular show, the application is one click away. So if you want to apply to Turn 10 and potentially play an early version so you can get feedback of the next Forza Motorsport, just click on the application. Once the show goes live, just look for that link and, and hit that. I put that in there so you can easily um, transition to the application so you don't have to go looking for it. Uh, but in a video published on the official Forza Motorsport Twitter account, creative director Chris Asaki revealed that the new feedback-based playtest be as possible, though who applies, uh, it says through who applies can potentially get into an early version of the game and offer various degrees of feedback. Now, here's the big question to the panel. Do the Xbox, but again, if you're interested and you want to, you know, if you are a real diehard racer, if you are a diehard Forza Motorsport fan, you almost have to apply for this. I mean, for me personally, it would be just to get a peek at the game. I'm not, I, I like Horizon more than Motorsport. I'll be honest with you. So I applied anyway because I want, I, because I, I enjoy Forza as a whole. But here's the question, and this obviously is a little bit off to the right, opposed to the actual story. And I'll go to Zemi Games first on this. The big question is, what do Xbox players get in 2021? Are we getting the new Forza Motorsport? Or are we getting the rumor, thanks to Jeff Grubby Grub, who's going to be on Primetime Gaming next Monday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? That's right. Jeffy, uh, Jeffrey Grubb from VentureBeat is joining the crew to hopefully drop some nuggets of uh, hints or information. But he said earlier this year that he believed that we were getting Horizon 5 as opposed to Motorsport 8. So, I mean, what do you think that we get this year? We're getting one for sure, but mm -hmm. which one <clears throat> do you think it is? I mean, obviously, you know, like that, uh, I think Jeff Grubb, right? He, you know, made that statement of Horizon and that really, really just like twisted me up. Like, uh, you know, like, cause, like, who am I to argue with that man, right? Like, really? Um, like, what do I really Don't you dare to, argue with to, that to, hair. Compared to him, right? <laughs> um, please, did you just say hair? Please don't mm -hmm. bring up hair. Like, you know, I, I have a bag. Well, listen, you know, yeah, here's, 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 I, I'm shaving my beard, right? Well, here's the, here's the problem. Uh, you are bald as hell. And not because you, <laughs> not because you, you know, you're losing your hair. You just shaved. No, your I am losing my hair. I, I, I you're, shaved you're, my head for that very purpose. So when I say, <laughs> bring up hair. Don't bring up so, hair. So when I say that Jeff Grubb, uh, potentially friend of the show, because obviously I haven't met him yet, has mm -hmm. the greatest mane of hair in gaming, and I'm going to ask him the shampoo question yeah. on what. He washes daily with that beautiful mane of hair. But please continue. Well, you're, par you're partially right. Okay. He has the second greatest hair because Todd Howard has the best. All right. Todd you Howard, gotta, it, gotta our Lord God and Savior. Howard. God <laughs> Howard. God <laughs> he, he, he has he has some beautiful hair, that man. Um, no, I I I I enjoy motorsports more. Um, that's just me. I, you know, subjective. I enjoy motorsports more. So I want it to be motorsports. I also am selfish and I don't want to, you know, I've already made so many bad bets. All right. Like, let me have this one so I don't have to lose my beard. Right. Um, so I, I really hope that it's motorsports. I think, I think it makes a lot of sense for it to be motorsports, you know, looking at, you know, uh, when the last horizon game came out versus the last, uh, motorsports came out. We also heard, you know, information a while back about like the cinematic director, something, uh, you know, some guy like that. Uh, he was being moved to a different project off of, I think, Forza Motorsports. I believe that was the story. Yes. So that kind of indicated that we were going to see motorsports, uh, you know, pretty soon ish. And then now, you know, they're play testing it. You know, it really, really seems like motorsports is going to be the next one. Um, but then, of course, Jeff Grubb, uh, the second best hair in gaming, uh, he, you know, said he you know, mentioned Horizon. So it's really a toss up. I think it will be motorsports. I hope that it will be motorsports. Um, but I, I, I you know, I, I don't really know. It's really up in the air. Um, you know, of course, we know that we're going to get Halo Infinite this year. I, I don't think there's really any way around us not getting Halo Infinite. I still think Starfield is a pretty strong candidate. That we'll I get agree. That. And yeah. then, of course, we will get one Forza. I, I'm almost positive that we will get a Forza this year. I think it makes more sense on paper that it will be motorsports. But, I, you know, it could be Horizon. Um, I, I don't see Horizon. But 
it could be. Uh, but I think for sure those will be three of the games that we will uh, definitely, you know, uh, see this holiday. If any of them is 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 the least likely to appear, I think it would probably be Starfield. Yeah, I mean, again, we we don't know. What Star- Starfield is a conundrum at this point. Yeah. We don't know how be- how how difficult development has been since COVID. I mean, it, it has been a challenging situation for many many developers, big and small, and we've seen one delay after another. At this point, we don't know, but I I, I would say that I, again, I, and I said this before. I, I think that the fall, the September, October, November looks like this for Xbox. And again, I'm probably wrong, but I could potentially be right. Um, you in September, you you get um, a new uh, you get get a new Forza, which would be either Motorsport or of course Horizon. In October, you get Starfield. In November, you get Halo. And talk about a triple a triple whammy if that in fact it comes to fruition. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, good good stuff, Zemi. As always, uh, Pong, let's get your opinion on this. Which of the motorsports do you think we're closer to getting uh, in 2021? Because I I have a strong suspicion we're getting at least one, like Zemi said. Yeah, I, I've gone back and forth on this, but I'm on record as saying I think it's Horizon. Um, I think because they are redoing their, you know, with motorsport, they're they're trying something brand new. They're they're there's actually going to be a campaign in correct, that. Correct, yeah. correct. They're redoing everything. They've got a new engine supposedly, um, and they are you know reworking exactly what motorsport is going to look like going forward. Um, you know, we've heard more of a, you know, games of service type game where, where it's constantly just being updated. It's, it's, you know, it's an ongoing, uh, world, uh, versus just, you know, iteration after iteration, uh, you know, every couple years. So I think with that being said, I, I could also see neither, I could also see neither happening this year mm. and motorsport actually going, uh, being a spring launch, oh, wow. um, okay. you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, you know, we don't get a horizon, um, you know, due to the fact that obviously there were, you know, playgrounds working on fable as well. Um, and they want to keep up the tradition where motorsport comes out and then horizon comes out after that. And playground may be redoing horizon and what it means, you know, going forward to be horizon. Um, or they could be trying to, you know, I've said this and I got poo pooed by it, but I think there's a possibility that motorsport just becomes, uh, you know, a, a hub. And there's a, there's a horizon side and there's a motorsport side and, you know, you can kind of travel between both, uh, worlds. And I, I, I think it'd be kind of cool actually. Um, so I could see it happening where we don't get either one this year and then motorsport comes out, um, in all of its glory in spring, uh, which would be a great launch time for it. Um, you know, in 2022, um, no, but but if you had to pin me down right now, I'll, I'll stay on record and, and say that Horizon comes out this year and then Motorsport is next uh, holiday, fall holiday uh, of 2022 uh, when it's ready to rock and roll. But uh, and then they go back to their year, uh, you know, year yes, on, year off. Yes, kind of correct. Situation. Cor- yeah. Correct. Exactly. Um, you know, and again, but we don't know what Motorsport's going to look like. So if it is a games of service, it could just be a continuously updated you know, series and they no longer have a new iteration. It's just, hey, here's, you know, here's the updates. And and here's a new car pack and here's new tracks. Here's, you know, whatever they're going to do. Um, you know, so that would be an interesting way if they're going to take it that route. Uh, I'm excited. I, I love both equally for what they provide. I, I would say I probably spend more time in Horizon uh, than I do motorsport, but I, I love both aspects. I love the sim aspect of motorsport uh, when I want to do some real racing. Uh, and I love, obviously, just the, the the pure unadulterated fun that is Horizon and, and all the craziness that you can get into in there. And I love cars in general. So both give me something there. So. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I, look, I, I love motorsport for what it is, especially if you are a real nuts and bolts kind of, uh, uh, you know, racer fan. It has everything you could possibly want. And then some um, I do prefer Horizon. I, I, I'm on record on saying so. I, I just like Horizon's, you know, arcadiness, if you will. Um, but I will definitely I mean, I purchased every every Forza Motorsport to date, including, you know, when they had the season passes and everything, because I still like a good racer, uh, but I like driving around on the grass, doing jumps, you know, right. you know, chasing boards and things of that nature. That's why I say, boom, just think about it. If they did do like a, like fuzzy, if I, 
my good buddy fuzzy in the in the chat um you know forza world where it's just they add both styles to one world and you can drive just between them you could race you know to a horizon event or you could you know enter into a forza motorsport but you're driving in between both worlds it'd be an interesting concept that's kind of dope I, 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 I like it. what you're putting down there yeah. brother i'm, yeah, I'm definitely yeah. buying your game for sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right. Well, listen, folks, this is, uh, again, smaller topic of the day. Um, it, I, you know, it, it, it's 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 food for thought. I, I, I am hoping that we do get a Forza. I want to see what, you know, I, I, one of the, one of the, the genres that look and can be shown the best on new hardware have always been racers. And really, at this point, no one makes it better than uh than uh microsoft's two studios and i cannot wait to see what they can do on the x to be honest i'm i'm very much looking forward to that but i definitely want to move on to the next topic and folks this this is a really big one here this this one is going to be a lot of fun um you know in a story that i pulled from comicbook.com a new rumor suggests that nintendo nintendo and xbox We'll be making a, a huge announcement later this year. Now, even before I got this story, when I was writing up this particular show, um, I had called for a big announcement coming in for, uh, in fall. This is before I read this story. Now, it turns out that uh, Nick uh, Special Ed Baker, uh, this is someone that's on Twitter. He's the co-founder of xboxera.com and i didn't even know that and i'm a huge fan of those guys um the post of uh, the, the 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 showrunner pointed out uh to an april 9th uh, game mess video from jeff grubb who we just finished talking about and in that video jeff grubb had confirmed uh that phil spencer's photo with uh, that, 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 with the items on his, you know, now infi infamous shelf in the background, uh, not only meant something, but it included a Nintendo Switch. In the video, uh, Grub confirms that everything on Phil's shelf means something incoming. Now, I've had this topic in the back of my mind for a while, and I said, well, if the switch is on Phil's um, shelf, then maybe, maybe it means that Xbox Game Pass in some form or fashion is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Now, I don't think you're going to get a chance to play Gears 5 on the go because this, it, the console just cannot play it. It's, it, it's just not capable. I think it's going to be a scaled down version. But here was the exact tweet from uh, Special Ed, who is who's a notorious insider and has dropped. I mean, he's been wrong a lot, you know, a, a significant amount of times, but he's also been even more right with some of his leaks. Here's what he said. Arguably, the only person I've seen so far to get it and understand the connection here is and how all this came about is Jeff Grubb. He says everything on Phil's shelf meant something incoming, to which Ed, uh, Special Ed said on Twitter, and I quote, Welp, the truth is out. The Nintendo Switch on the shelf indeed meant something, and it's going to be revealed this fall. Now, you know, my mind starts to go a little further than, you know, just as simple as, well, Xbox Game Pass on Switch, which would be kind of dope because it would make, uh, um, you know, uh, Xbox a lot of money. But I don't think it's going to be Xbox Game Pass on Xbox. I think it's going to be a very scaled down version. But then I sat here writing this show and it started to really, um, could it be as something as simple as Xbox Game Pass? And I said, no, it, it, it's got to be a little bit more. So yeah, this is what I thought about. And there is a lot to break down here, folks. So get ready, panel. Um, the questions that I have raised here simply is is xbox game pass coming to switch that's the simple one but here's where it gets a little into the weeds and this is where i start to have a little fun is microsoft teaming up with nintendo to co-develop a new banjo kazooie it's a it's a it's a question that has given me goosebumps live on the air because i want that in the worst way and banjo kazooie came to smash brothers last year to the delight of many, many people. Um, and here's another one. 
Will the Azure servers help with the rumored new switch online that's being co-developed by Microsoft? Here's another big question, and I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Pong Sol on this. Uh, there's three questions here. One even more important or relevant than the next. What are your thoughts on this, dude? Well. I mean, I love speculation town. So yeah, I mean, this, it's, this, it's, it's, it's always nice. It's always nice and sunny. <laughs> Seventy five in is. speculation town. Oh yeah, rainbows. There's unicorns running around everywhere. It's great. I mean, it, it's beautiful. It's, it's a great place to live. <laughs> uh, I will always live there because I think this stuff is some of the most fun. Even if it is a dream, even if it is something um, that that doesn't come to be, uh, come to pass. I think it's fun. Uh, because we have seen this relationship between Nintendo and Xbox growing uh, over the past, you know, uh, years, uh, these past gens. So why is it out of the realm of possibility? Because they swim in two different ponds, right? Nintendo and 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 Microsoft are not competitors, right? Uh, the, the the Nintendo, you know, fan base uh, is 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 separate and with some crossover between. Uh, but they both offer two very unique experiences. So why could we not see some type of partnership uh, with co-development uh, in mind between Nintendo and Xbox? I, I think it certainly is something that we could see. Phil is definitely open to the idea. He is about a, a one world gaming uh, kind of environment where everybody gets to enjoy as much content wherever they are um, and all different types of content. So, you know, I could definitely see it. Number one, Game Pass X Cloud coming to Switch, especially with the new version of Switch uh, supposedly rumored uh, to be in the works. Um, it would become the ultimate mobile, uh, you know, X Cloud Game Pass uh, device on the market. And I think it would be perfect. And then you start talking about co-development of games. Why not? Uh, why not have, if you've got all these great uh, IPs sitting around, that's nothing's being done with it. And you know, both fan bases would enjoy something. I mean, like who better to make right. a new Banjo-Kazooie right. than right. Nintendo, right? Exactly. Why not? Uh, and then share it. I mean, it, it's the perfect, if you're not going to do anything with it and you don't have the team that you want to put on it, uh, but you see Nintendo over there, and they've got some great development houses. Uh, why not make a deal? Uh, yes, why why not agree. have that happen? Let, um, let Microsoft publish uh, right. on their side. Let Nintendo publish on Correct. their side. Everyone's making money, and right. we all get a new Banjo Kazooie. Exactly, and you know, it, with with the expansion, let's say the X, you know, let's say the X Cloud Game Pass, uh, you know, offerings are made available to uh, Nintendo uh, users, right? Um, you, you're opening up a whole new, obviously, which is important, a whole new base, a whole new group of people to the Xbox ecosystem, and it would be beneficial because it expands Nintendo's, you know, offerings as well, and they would be making money off of it. It would be a, you know, I'm sure a, a friendly deal between two companies that see benefits out of, of out of doing it. Um, so I think this certainly is a possibility. I don't think it's it's as far fetched as some people might laugh because you know the old mentality of everybody's in competition and everybody's fighting it out, and you know may may the strong survive has, has kind of gone the way of the dodo bird at this point, uh, especially with. If Bill's attitude, um, you know, towards the entire situation and, and obviously Nintendo swimming in their own pond more, you know, happy to be there. They don't care. They're not trying to compete with the latest and greatest technology. But, you know, then, like you said, boom, Microsoft can also offer to help them uh, with making their services better. Uh, so it could be a complex multi-tiered deal between two companies who share the interest of growing this industry even further and making sure that the fans of both places have the best offerings. I can see it happening. Boom. I don't think, I don't think it's crazy. And I think it's definitely something that could, we, we could see come in the future. Uh, I think it'll come out in bits and pieces. Um, I think we'll see something. I, I do believe that, that the X cloud game pass is kind of the first domino to drop. Um, you know, I think it's something that, you know, has been, talked about and worked on for probably a lot longer than we are aware of uh, behind the scenes um, because it just makes so much sense for both companies. Again, it wouldn't be the full experience. We're not talking about the entire catalog of Game Pass. It would be some version of Game Pass being offered because Nintendo obviously would still want to be able to sell you know, th certain third-party titles and stuff 
uh, you know, on their store alone and, and, you know, and make the full profit off of it. Um, but at the same time, some version of game pass, maybe it's just, you know, Microsoft first party stuff, whatever the case may be. I definitely think that's something that we could see happen. It's certainly worthy of a conversation. And again, yes, it is speculative for sure. We, 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 we don't know. We don't really, you know, we have a couple of stories that I, that I pieced together that could suggest one, one thing or the other. But I will say that uh, it definitely opens the door. I mean, listen, a, a co-developed slash published Banjo-Kazooie is only a good thing for gamers. And, and I say that because, A, so, being the selfish gamer that I can be, oh. I want a new Banjo-Kazooie. But what that also what, does... What about Viva and, Pinata? Viva Pinata dude, as well. I, I, I mean, there's so, so many all, games in the <laughs> IPs that could happen like that. V- Viva Pinata uh, just yep. became available on the cloud, uh, one and yep. two. And yep. don't you know that was trending on social media? I mean, yep. Viva Pinata, because you know something? It's, it is a game that screams family. It's a game that I, I, I honestly believe uh, it, it is still relevant. It's still, it's still one of those games that if you did do an HD version or um, you did uh, you know, make a sequel, it, it, would, it would make money. It would make money for yep. Microsoft, and again, I don't. And, you know, Rare, Rare is in a position where they're doing their own thing. They don't want to yeah. go back to old franchises. Get someone else to do with them. Exactly. Definitely exactly. get someone. Else to do and, and there would be crossover between the both fan bases. It would work perfect for what Nintendo likes. It well, I mean, think about awesome. this for think about this for a second. A Viva Pinata on on uh, on Xbox Game Pass through the Nintendo console yep. is perfect for handheld mode. Yep. Absolutely. It's a, it's it, a perfect combination. And there's, a, I, again, we're just scratching the service a surface. Uh, we could probably go down the list of games that are available that have could use a, a remake that would work perfect in that scenario. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely see it. Yeah, absolutely. Zemi, let me, let me craft, catch up on some of these super chats and then we'll get to your, uh, gamer by choice drops a very generous final super chat and says, people seem to forget that Jim dance moves. Ryan said that we aim to have fewer games, but bigger ones. I hope it doesn't hurt quality or even offer a mind share loss. I, I mean, listen, the writing was on the wall when he said that, or he said that almost a year ago, that they're going to not make as many games, but really big quality ones. And listen, you know, if you were a PlayStation fan, and of course I am, their games sometimes take five, six years to come out. You know, you, you know, we don't know when Spider-Man 2 is coming. We know that we have a new uh, uh, Horizon coming. We know that a God of War is coming, but I don't think it's the God of War 2 that a lot of people are uh, thinking it's going to be. I, I honestly think that it's going, and again, I don't care because the way that Corey Barlog, who was the director of the original, he had a DLC plan that Sony told him, no, it was just too ambitious. I think that's what we're going to get. I think it's going to be a Miles Morales situation for the next god of war and i i loved miles morales by the way i'm one one trophy away from the platinum so i enjoyed my time with it i'll take a new god of war like that as well but i i, I think that these big games you, you just they take a lot of years and you know sony's gonna have to figure out how to fill you know the the the, the gaps between these big games uh, you know a game like uh horizon forbidden west is going to be dope i cannot wait to play it but it, it is a game that may or may not have a multiplayer mode that if you play through the game and you're done with it you just may be done with it and if they don't have something to follow up and third parties aren't signing on to sony like they used to because of the xbox game pass factor um I don't know what Sony's going to do. It's going to be interesting to say the least. Um, we have Raiden Blade drop uh, quite a few super chats. Raiden's Blade first one is for two dollars. Says good afternoon, MLB. All you Xbox fans, get it now. Uh, yeah, I, I mine's already downloaded, ready to go. Uh, Raiden Blade drops an additional two dollars super chat. And says Mr. Boom, I believe Game Pass is well past thirty million. Yeah, I, I don't think they're there yet. I, 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 I love the enthusiasm. I, I think that they're probably closer to 25. I think that in 60 days, they could add an additional two, depending on what they drop. If they drop some big bombs in there that we didn't know about, they could easily, you know, three to five million in a 60-day period. I mean, people are jumping on because the value proposition cannot be denied. Uh, Gerald Mack, generous friend of the show, he drops 
an outstanding final Super Chat and says, I honestly believe we are about to see the first crash of Xbox Game Pass with MLB. Uh, it's going to be crazy. Just just wait. MLB sets the stage for everything else. I, I think you're on to something with that. Um, I grow fire. Drops a very generous file super chat and says, the truth is PlayStation is paralyzed like a deer in headlights, compounded by the fact that the parent Sony, uh, so, uh, the parent Sony's bottom line is heavily reliant on PlayStation revenue. That's a fantastic point. And Raiden Blade drops an additional $5 super chat and says, Outriders Square, uh, no, Outriders Square will never leave Xbox out again. How many people have eyes on this game and selling like hotcakes? Avengers, anyone? Oh, too late. And I mean, fantastic point. And Dafikin89 drops a $5 super chat and says, The sole idea of Nintendo developing Xbox Dorm and cartoonish IPs in some sort of deal is freaking genius and sounds really possible. I mean, again, all you have to do is look at what Nintendo was able to do with some of their Mario games. What they did, you know, this is this is a company that's talented. And man, even if they only remake Banjo 1 in a Nintendo-esque kind of a way, like... It's, I mean, it's 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 genius. It's it's a genius move. Microsoft helps fund it. Everyone makes money. Banjo sells on both platforms. It's a match made in heaven, folks. I mean, it, it literally is just scream. Please do it. But Zemi, got to get your opinion on this topic. Um, what 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 are your thoughts on on this situation? I mean. Do, do, you know, is there room here to see a Nintendo and Xbox collaboration? The two bigs teaming up to potentially, you know, bring us a Banjo Kazooie, bring Game Pass to the millions of Switch users, and even potentially have Microsoft co develop an actual working online for them through the Azure service. Yeah, I mean, I would love to see all three happen. I think all three would be big for both companies and it would be, you know, mutually beneficial for both companies, right? <clears throat> um, I think the biggest, you know, like the biggest one of those three ex uh, examples that you provide that would have the largest impact on actual game or on, on Xbox and the Game Pass service would be, uh, well, growing the Game Pass service would be, of course, putting Game Pass on Nintendo. And I think that that would be an amazing move because, you know, it's not so much about selling the hardware. It's not so much about selling, you know, the Xbox console, right? Um, they they don't care what device you play it on. They just want you to play Xbox games and subscribe to their service, right? And so, you know, that would work out for Nintendo. Of course, they could sell more hardware, um, you know, to, to people that are interested in Nintendo and Xbox. Those people could just buy a Nintendo, right? And and stream uh, Xbox first party games uh, through, through the app, right? Um, and so I think it's beneficial to both companies, but I think it would really, really do, uh, it would really grow Xbox uh, Game Pass substantially by, by making a move like that. And like what you guys were talking about, it would not be an identical app to what is on uh, Xbox right now. Um, you know, looking at PC, uh, PC is not identical to the Xbox console. There are games that are only available on Xbox Game Pass for PC, and there are games that are only available on Xbox Game Pass for Xbox that 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 are not you know crossed back and forth. And, and so, like what you know Pong was saying, I think it makes a lot of sense. Of course, they they wouldn't probably want to put um, The Witcher, for instance, in. Um, and, uh, you know, a, uh, a, you know, a game pass for Nintendo, because that's going to take away from actual, uh, software sales, but potentially, potentially, right. So that might not work, but first party exclusives or even some third party games that just are not published on Nintendo. I think it makes a heck of a lot of sense to do that. Um, I think what's, what's the most exciting, uh, to, to fans though, is the idea of having Xbox and Nintendo collaborate and 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 start creating some games together like your banjo kazooie your uh viva pinata i think that that is what's most exciting to fans and and, and gamers and and i would love to see that happen i you know i'm gonna be honest with you i've never played a viva pinata game right it's, I've a, never it's a lot it's a lot of fun dude like um, it's 
it's a lot of fun. And and and, and in all fairness, if I'm going to be honest, you know, I might try it out, and, and I'm probably not going to be a big fan of that. But just because I'm not a big fan of it doesn't mean that I don't see the value of having that game being made because so many people love and adore those franchises both, right? And 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 so you know that's probably what's what would have the biggest impact on on fans and what fans around the world would want to see the most. And then of course helping Nintendo uh, with their online infrastructure using the Azure server. I mean of course that's going to be beneficial to both companies and in some ways it might be more beneficial to Nintendo, which is great, right? They're not, you know, uh, direct competitors. They're competitors. Don't, don't get it twisted. They are for sure are competitors. They're not direct competitors though. Um, I, I think all three scenarios are, are, are awesome. I would love to see all three happen. If I had to say the one, the, the one scenario that I would be more uh, likely to root for it's game pass on Nintendo, because to me as a gamer, that's, what's going to have the most impact to me, right? That's going to give Xbox the most amount of money. And whenever Xbox wins, I win as a gamer, they've proven yes. that, right? <laughs> so, so for me, my selfish little self, I would want to see, uh, Game Pass go to you know go to Nintendo. If it was uh you know a, like a uh, only one option is going to happen, I think that that is exactly what I would want to see. Uh, but I would really also like to see Nintendo and Microsoft uh, form a really deep partnership and 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 work on all three of these scenarios that you brought forth. You know, I I, I would love to see them adopt the Microsoft Azure server for Nintendo Online. I would love to see a Banjo Kazooie and and you know what other games that they might be able to collaborate on. Uh, and and of course, I would be very very interested to see Game Pass on Nintendo. Uh, but taking it a step further, I one one really big reason why I would love to see this happen is because it would somewhat crack open that door for for Sony. To, to potentially work out a deal with Microsoft as well. And so we could see the Game Pass app going over to going over to PlayStation. Um, I, I think that that's more important than anything is, is, you know, it's not how many consoles Xbox can sell, it's how many services they can sell and getting the Game Pass service on as many platforms as possible is just going to, you know, grow that service. And, and whenever that service grows, I'm going to win as a gamer. Um, so, so that's another, you know, exciting, you know, uh, point of view for that as well is them working with Sony, having this deal actually come to fruition. Of course it's speculation, but having it happen, uh, would kind of crack open that door for Sony to potentially come in and work out a deal with Microsoft as well. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's exciting. I hope it happens. I hope it's not just rumor and wild speculation that we hear and never, never see. Um, you know, we we have heard people talking about uh, the potential of Game Pass going on to you know Nintendo. I, I don't think it was you know uh, any verified rumors or anything. It was just you know us talking in the background. Uh, but I think it makes a lot of sense and it would be beneficial. And I'd love to see it happen. That makes both of us, dude. Honestly, uh, it, it, again, it, it, it's one of those matches that if you would have said this 10 years ago, people mm -hmm. would have called you crazy. Like, nah, that's never going to happen. Nintendo yeah. working with Xbox and Xbox working with Nintendo. It's like cats and dogs hanging out and enjoying each other's company. I can't see it happening. But you know something, folks? I think, I think it is going to happen. I think it's going to happen well, in a big way. A lot of things that, that 10 years ago, if we said was going to happen people would laugh us, laugh at us. They'd laugh yeah. us off the podcast, right? If we said, you know, 10 years from now, Xbox is going to be putting all of its games in a service uh, and, and, and they're not going to be charging, you know, and you can play all of their first party games day and date on release for $10 a month. People would laugh at you, right? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, it, it's incredible to see, you know, how, how far we've come in, in, in gaming in, in 10 years. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, folks, this has been one hell of a 90-minute show. I mean, my God. Uh, talk about a way to start the week. Real quick, shout out to our brother, Dragonheart Yobi. He says, at Double Barrel Gaming, just got done watching your last podcast. And he's talking about last night's primetime gaming. And now you're live with this one. Keep the content coming, Pure Fire. Well, thank you so much for that. Well, listen, folks, uh, shameless plug, uh, tomorrow. Now, normally, as I, if you remember a couple weeks ago, I had the pleasure of uh, working with Joe, who's developing Song of Iron. And we did a live show 
where he took que- you know live questions on the air. Uh, tomorrow, I am uh, been given another golden opportunity uh, where I'm going to be intervu- interviewing uh, Systemic Reactions uh, game director Simon Vickers of the upcoming uh, incredible title from Avalanche Studios called Second Extinction. Now, that is not going to be live. What I'm going to do is I'm going to interview him privately, and I believe someone else from the dev team is going to be with us as well. So I, I didn't even know that. I just actually just found that out that we're getting someone else. There's going to be two people ever interviewing, which is pretty dope. I will drop it as a premiere as soon as I'm done with the editing. I don't know if that's going to be on Wednesday, but of course I will keep you advised. And of course, this Thursday, you're going to get another Xbox Factor podcast. Friday, you're going to get Breakfast with Boom. And then obviously, that's going to be the week's content. So I just want to thank everybody for the incredible support. Uh, I have two really, really massive secrets that I cannot drop right now. I'm working with two other developers. I'll say that. And I'm going to be making those announcements once we iron down the interview details, folks. They're, they're huge. They're, they're very, very big. And I can, one of which is a personal get, personal excitement from, uh, for me as a, as a kid of a new game that's coming out. And the second one I think is going to really turn some heads. So as soon as I, I can, I can give that information, I will be dropping those two secrets, but my next interview obviously is going to be tomorrow with, uh, with uh, Simon Vickers, and he's the game director of Second Extinction, which is one of my most anticipated games. So again, it's very exciting for me, and I will be giving the information on when you can check out that show. But let's get to the outros, and I want to thank everybody for, first of all, the generosity that has come in. I mean, my God, so many super chats, I almost couldn't keep up. Thank you for the incredible generosity. And of course, folks, we had almost 600 people here like holy cow that is pretty damn good for a show that is relatively smaller than some of the bigger ones and it's during the day so thank you so much for that and we'll start with zemi game zemi want you to talk about constantgamer.com and more importantly what else you got going on brother well i can't talk about everything else i have going on but i can talk about constantgamer.com uh, ConstantGamer.com is a gaming media website similar to IGN, similar to Kotaku, si- similar to uh, GameSpot.com. The, except the, it's good. Except it's good. Yeah. Um, and we're we're very very unbiased in our reporting, very objective. Uh, whenever you read a news article, it's not you know we feel this way, we feel that way. It's this happened, and you know. Plain and simple, right? Uh, we don't mix our opinions with gaming news. We we just report what is the actual gaming news part. Um, and you know that's something that that you don't really see a whole lot in today's you know journalism or media. So um, if that sounds like the type of site that you would like to support, definitely head over to constantgamer.com and check out the site. Uh, in addition to doing you know gaming news, we also do featured articles, game reviews, and we have a community section where we post gaming related quizzes on there. Um, so definitely check out constantgamer.com. And if you'd be interested in writing for the site, uh, all you got to do is click on the contact us page, then click on the page that says, uh, join the team, fill out a short little application and I'll be in touch uh, with you about writing for the site. Uh, but yeah, boom, this show has been absolutely incredible, man. Uh, fantastic topics and, uh, yeah, can't wait uh, for next week, man. Thanks. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for being here, brother. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, definitely looking forward uh, to talking more Xbox with you next Tuesday. Yep. And, um, and, and of course, Pong Soul, brother, you got a lot going on, brother. So we're going to take a minute to take a step back. First of all, I want you to talk about living split screen. It is your new forte into the uh, uh, content creation game. I think what you're doing over there is pretty damn incredible. And of course, you're on a Friday night podcast with, with wow, man, talk about a panel of, <laughs> of incredible people that just seems to have grown to the brain. Brady Bunch level size. Of course, we're talking about Friday night's Xbox Ultimate podcast run by Mav, the great Mav himself, of course, his wife, Caitlin. We, you know, three bits a part of that. Lady AF, uh, the Assassin Looper. Who am I forgetting? Oh, and Psychonauts 8 is a part of it. And you as well. Tell everyone about these podcasts and what else you got going on. 
Absolutely, boom! Thank you so much, and and obviously, thanks, Zemi. Uh, this is awesome. I'm coming here every Tuesday now and being a part of this. This is uh, just a, a great way to start my day off. Uh, chat, you guys, been amazing. Uh, obviously, lots of good conversation in there as always. Appreciate you each and every week coming out to these shows and supporting us. Uh, but yeah, boom! Like you said, um, well, let's start with living split screen since you started there. Saturday mornings, myself and my brother from another Steel Rain. Uh, we've done three episodes. We're over a hundred subs already. I it's love been it. An awesome turnout. Each and every week, a consistent group of people. We want to grow this community. We talk about all things gaming. It's not centric. Obviously, Xbox has been heavy because they're in the news all the time, but we do touch on all different types of topics. We talked about Powerpuff Girls and talent in Hollywood. Which, versus- by the way, that movie <laughs> looks atrocious. Oh, atrocious. But So we, we brought that up because we wanted to talk about the talent swing between Hollywood uh, to video games and whether or not the talent pool is now uh, bigger in actual video game development than it is anymore in Hollywood and that side of things. So we talk about all different types of topics. Uh, we don't have a set list. Uh, if somebody brings something up a chat we want to touch on, we do it. If if Steele and I are just you know conversating and, and it comes, you know, we, we want to go down a different uh, alley, we do that. It's a free flowing, organic type show. Uh, you know, Steele always says live, raw, and uncut. That's the way we kind of run it. It's just two guys getting together and chatting about different subjects across the industry uh, and the community. So awesome show. We are there at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Central Time, 3 p.m. Uh, for UK time. Come join us. Uh, we love to start your Saturday mornings off right. Uh, and then you talked about, uh, boom, Xbox Ultimate Friday Nights, Fun Speculation, a.k.a. Mav. Everybody knows him. The channel has been growing huge. He's over 800 subs now. He's, he's blowing do. up. The guy's yeah. everywhere. Does great streams. His wife, Caitlin, 3-Bit, Psychonauts 8, Assassin Lupa, Lady AF, and myself, the Brady Bunch, the Avengers, whatever you want to call us. We, we, <laughs> the we J- have a, JLA. Exactly. We, we just have a great group conversation about all types of topics xbox related and that's friday nights uh nine o'clock eastern eight o'clock central time come join us it's a great time i know there's a couple other shows on grg and stuff uh we all offer something really good so just come by and and, and see us uh we got a great community going there as well saturday nights uh the shop podcast with ptk blam we're going to end your saturday nights right centurion fuzzy belvedere who was in the uh, chat today yes, he always is uh, and stay gorilla uh, we, we love to end your Saturday nights. It's a quick show, a little bit over an hour. We have some great guests, um, but uh, you know, we had hustle and motivate last week. Um, we've got Lord sovereign of the ILP coming nice. in. So Ooh. shout out to him. We're going to have him this week. So drop by. Love, we have so- a great show. love, love yeah. sovereign. Yeah, exactly. So, but no, again, thank you for all the support. Boom yourself personally have done. Um, and, and you know, this has just been awesome. And I just, I, I can't, I can't stop having fun. I know I do a lot of shows, but I just can't stop talking about video games and having fun. So that's why I'm here. That's why I do this and appreciate all of you. Uh, well, listen, it's great to have you a part of this show, dude. It was a big get for me personally. I love helping you grow your channel, help Mav out as much as I can. Like I said, I think that we don't see enough of one content creator helping another. Uh, I'm not saying that others don't do it. I'm saying that I go out of my way to do it because it's something that is important to me. Um, and we all started with one sub. And to to, to see others help uh, you know, grow other people's work. I, I think it's important. I, I'm never concerned about, oh, someone's going to, if I help someone, I may lose a sub. I, I could give a flying shit, to be honest with you. Uh, I care about my subs, but I care more about helping others. And that's and what I it did. should be. And that's the way it absolutely should be. That's how I was in uniform. That is how I am out of uniform. And that's why I had an amazing 21-year career as a New York City police officer and why I spent most of it uh, as a a youth officer and, more importantly, working with the community because, well, heck, it's super important to work with the community, and that's what I'm doing here. And I want to thank this community for supporting Double Barrel Gaming and uh, making this a very successful channel. I mean, I've only been doing live shows for just a just about three years and uh this the kind of um you know success i've had is is cannot be ignored and that's thanks to this incredible community so i'm going to close out today's show with something that's important to me hopefully one day it's important to you and that's something that my dad taught us when we were kids and it's super important now 
more than ever. And he said this, son, treat others how you want to be treated. And also, it doesn't cost anything to be nice. You live by those rules, and I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome day. So take care, everyone. We'll see you back here on Thursday on the newest episode of the Xbox Factor Podcast. (laughs) 